Well, Father, today we refuse to tolerate the poison of unbelief in our hearts. We've believed a lie about ourselves and about our salvation. We're done blaming the devil for our own faithlessness. As the good news, the gospel of your acceptance is preached, may we discover our divine and unmitigated acceptance in you. May we discover our completeness, our perfection as seen from your point of view. Open our eyes to what you see, what you say, what you know about us in reference to the finished work of your son. Church, take one of your hands and set it on your heart, if you will. And let's make this confession out loud together. Say, eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to receive, a mouth to confess, all the good things Christ has already provided. Come on, say, Christ has already provided. One more time, Christ has already provided for me. Now, if you're ready for God's word, give him the best praise you've given him. Come on, all day long. I need somebody to help me. I can tell I'm going to need a little water today. Hello, family. It's so good to see you. I love you so much. Thank you for being a part of our worship experience today here at our Irving location in person. Those of you joining us online or some other digital platform, grab your Bibles, if you will, please, and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Ephesians 1, verse 6. We're currently in a summer teaching series called In My Feelings. I know you already know that. But it's amazing how much God's Word has to say about our emotions and how we can control our emotions rather than our emotions control us. Now today, we are going to deal with a feeling. This is my daughter and I can kiss her if I want to. Some of you said, oh my God. That's my baby girl, my daughter, and she serves in her church. And I thank God for my family that serve alongside me every single day. But we're going to deal with a feeling Honestly, we are all familiar with. And, and for me, this feeling is somewhat of an occupational hazard. And if I'm not careful, it can begin to wreak havoc on my mind. And it has. I've allowed it. In fact, several other emotions arise from the prospect and presence of this feeling, including hurt feelings, loneliness, jealousy, guilt, shame, anxiety, social anxiety, embarrassment, sadness, anger. What does this feeling look like? There's a whole lot I could talk about. It's the nagging memory of a harsh critic. It's the pain left behind after someone you trusted as a friend leaves you. It's the weight of expectations that were placed on you that could not be carried or fulfilled. And truth be told, this feeling has kept me from a whole lot of things. I thought about it this week. It's kept me from building relationships with others as I have feared their eventual disappointment in me. It's kept me from 
dealing with deep heart issues as the pain in the past becomes such a delicate wound that I want no one to touch. It's kept me from taking risks. Risks for the kingdom that requires confidence in God's call and God's power in my life. And if you haven't figured it out yet, the feeling I want to deal with today is the feeling of rejection and God's remedy for it. And that's why I start with Ephesians 1 verse number 6 where Paul writes, To the praise and the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. Read it with me. Ready? Read. To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the beloved. Now I want you to make it personal. Instead of made us, say made me. Ready? Read. To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made accepted in the beloved. Italian sculptor Michelangelo stared at a block of marble that had been rejected by another artist. Someone asked him what he was looking at. Michelangelo replied, I'm looking at an angel. He was able to see what others couldn't and chiseled an angel out of the stone that another sculptor rejected. Think about it, 2,000 years ago, a different stone. By the way, the stone's name was Jesus. He felt the sting of rejection, but it's amazing. He kept his perfect perspective on his life. He knew his father was in complete control of everything, even every bad thing that happened to him and had a plan to somehow chisel something good out of it. The Bible says in Matthew 21, the stone that the the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is wonderful to see. This is the Lord's doing and it is wonderful to see. This is the Lord's doing. And it's wonderful to see, listen, not the rejection, the first part of the verse. The stone has now become the cornerstone. Although people rejected Jesus, his father somehow, some way, sculpted him as the very foundation of the church. What the enemy may have planned for evil God intended for good and the father fashioned the rejected Messiah into the world's savior well I can hear it now sure sure pastor Ben that's true for Jesus but what about when we're rejected can God really chisel an angel out of the marble for us. If we could actually see God's hand at work, that truly would be, come on, wonderful to see. And truth is, rejection isn't what happens to us, but how we interpret what happens to us. It's how we view ourselves in relation to others and are we so insecure church that we can't handle being rejected some people here today are absolutely devastated when they are not accepted as a matter of fact because of social media and our devices we have a generation 
that are absolutely devastated when they aren't accepted. Life, come on, would be so much easier if we had some kind of Teflon, you know, perspective. Although people hated Jesus, he chose not to be offended and always looked to his father to control the outcome. I want you to remember, church, what we perceive. I've taught you this for years. What we perceive where in our hearts determine how we respond. Your heart sees. Your heart sees, the Bible says. That's why you need to guard your heart. Your heart becomes the lens that you look through and see everything. You don't see things as they are. You see things as your heart is. That's why you've got to be aware of the feelings that hit your heart. What we perceive in our hearts determine how we respond. So if we are easily offended, what happens? We become hypersensitive to rejection. Looking through a filter of rejection makes us believe all kind of crazy things. I thought about my wife. Uh, a woman approached Kim to ask a question. Now, this was in the early years of our ministry. And as the woman was drawing close to Kim, Kim began to divert her focus away from the woman, hoping that the woman would just pass her by. And this woman just explodes. There you go again. You always look away from me. Why do you think, you know, you have the right to do that? And who do you think you are? I'm sick and tired of your arrogant attitude. You're just another snobby pastor's wife who thinks she's better than everybody else. And back then, I guess I, I'm going to just move along. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Kim was taken aback by this woman's outburst of anger, rage. And what this woman did not understand was that Kim, at that time, was new to ministry. She was in her early 20s. What do we even know? She didn't grow up in church. My wife didn't grow up in church. She grew up in a small town around the same small group of, of friends from kindergarten all the way to high school and had just moved to this new big city with me, her new husband, and she didn't know how to make small talk. She was terrified that she would say the wrong thing, and the woman had misperceived the situation, she'd been harboring resentment in her heart toward Kim, thinking Kim had been looking down on her. And although it wasn't true, that's how she saw it. Watch this. She was looking through a filter of rejection. How in the world do we acquire this perception of rejection? I think rejection germinates. I don't have time to teach on all of this. Let's go quick. It germinates in three fertile grounds, and we got to deal with it. Just, just quickly, let me touch on it. The notes are in the uh, Calvary app. But I would say rejection through difficult people. That's big. And somebody needs to know this today. Just, just because someone rejects us doesn't mean the problem is with us. The problem may be with a person, a dysfunctional, flawed, broken person who makes everyone feel incompetent. And if you're sitting next to one, don't look at him. Y'all, some people are just mean to everybody. And there are difficult people who make life hard on others. And since the world contains, I'm sorry, a high percentage of these impolite individuals, our chances of encountering one is pretty high. But come on, don't take their snubbing as a personal insult. These people are mean to everybody, not just you. They don't know how to kindly respond to others. So guess what? We have a choice every day. We can accept rejection or we can reject it. And if we invite rejection into our heart, and many have, we're going to feel unwanted. We're going to feel unloved. We're going to feel unworthy. And if we refuse to allow people to bother us, we'll go about our business with peace in our heart. No matter what happens, 
Church, don't allow people to make you feel unacceptable. You've got to learn, and I'm going to teach you, how to find your acceptance in Christ, not through trying to appease someone who cannot be pleased. Another way we acquire a perception of rejection, I think I would say rejection through ourselves. Some people never realize that they themselves are the source of their own rejection. Are you all with me today? So they invite rejection by rolling out the unwelcome mat toward others using gestures like whatever. Again, don't look at the person next to you, but frowning, looking away, crossing their arms, staring at a screen, staring at the floor. Let me tell you, a cold disposition will sabotage a relationship before it ever gets started. Why would people want to be our friend if we keep pushing them away with our bad attitude? Proverbs 18, somebody hollered, hallelujah. Proverbs 18 says, a man who has friends must himself be friendly. And many people, this is sad, they don't even have a clue. So many people are totally unaware. We are totally unaware. And many people don't have a clue that they're causing their own rejection so they get angry when others don't befriend them and they should actually blame themselves for creating barriers that are keeping others away. And finally, I would say this. I don't have time. i got to go quick. Imagination. I would say rejection through imaginations. And this is important because highly sensitive people often struggle with imaginations of rejection. Their overly active imaginations create the rejection that they love to hate. And rejected people, you know about them, they take no for an answer before the question's ever been asked. They program their minds to assume that others' responses will always be negative. They look for rejection everywhere. And they find it. False imaginations cause them to misinterpret innocent intentions and draw wrong conclusions. What you look for, you're going to find. Be careful not to interpret others' actions as rejection. Our assumptions may incorrectly judge their intentions. So we might believe people are trying to avoid us, When in reality, they aren't. We only think they are. Like the time that I believed, people left the room to avoid my preaching. When in fact, they had to leave to take care of personal business, an emergency in the family. Imaginations, don't you miss this, imaginations can destroy relationships. Many false imaginations have destroyed your relationships because we think, we, 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 we make assumptions. They destroy relationships because they make us assume, those imaginations, things that aren't true. See, I knew a woman with a history of rejection who was always suspicious of others' motives. And I sat with them, and her husband, you know, was telling the story, how he complimented her by saying, you look nice today. Just, you look nice today. And she replied, are you saying that I don't look nice every day? You said I look nice today. That must mean you think I don't look good every other day. And her puzzled husband said, no, I, I, I didn't mean that. I just think your dress looks nice and you look nice in your dress. And the woman said, well, I don't know how to take it any other way. You think I look bad most of the time, don't you? Y'all, because of her twisted perspective, this woman, watch, 
turned a compliment into an insult. She was never able to receive her husband's acceptance because she looked through a filter of rejection. Are y'all getting this? Do you see how viewing others through that filter is sabotaging good things in your life? Sabotaging relationships? Sabotaging blessings? Listen, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but hear me. We don't need to keep changing jobs, running from relationship to relationship, hopping from church to church, avoiding certain places. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you don't need to live as a victim any longer. You don't, li- you don't need to live defeated and discouraged lives. You don't need to forfeit your joy and your peace any longer. Listen, there is too much at stake to allow the rejection of a few to keep us from pursuing the things of God, the purpose of God, the high call of God. And this is not a trick question, but how many of you today, and I'm serious, you want to break free from the fear and the pain of rejection? Raise your hand right now. Come on, that's everybody. I want to break free from the fear and the pain of rejection. And if that's going to happen We're going to have to consider quickly God's remedy for rejection. And by the way, these are not just points. This has been on me strong all week. I want to minister to your hearts, to your wounded, broken hearts in Jesus' name. You ready? Out loud, say yes. Yes. Let's talk about God's remedy. The first thing I would say is this. You've got to realize that Sometimes rejection is actually protection. You've got to realize that sometimes rejection is actually protection. Well, I thought about Revelation 3. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. Jesus opens wide doors of whatever, favor, provision, healing, wisdom, abundant life. He opens it up to you. But he also, he's so good, he also shuts doors of harm, of fear, of bondage, of confusion, all kinds of of frustrations in your life. And and you receive now all of these blessings of, of the provision and the protection. How? By simply trusting him. Trusting him. Just like Jesus trusted the Father. Trusting him. But I thought about one time Jesus instructed his disciples to what? Hey, you shake off the dust from your feet when the unwelcome mat is rolled out. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 10. He said, if any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, he says, the message of the kingdom, he says, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. In other words, he's saying, if, if you experience rejection, sometimes you got to shake it off. Jesus wanted them to move on and leave rejection behind. That's good advice. Shake off your rejection and look for new opportunities. Don't let even one speck of rejection stick to the soles of your feet or you are going to carry it into the next place. Who am I talking to? Don't you dare allow past rejection to distort your view of future opportunities. Even though people rejected Jesus, He became, what the Bible say, the head of the church. God's plan is not undermined. Who am I talking to? His plan is not undermined just because we aren't warmly welcomed by a few people. In fact, some of your rejections should be viewed as God's way to divert you to some better things. Come on, somebody, wake up. Come on, clap those hands and give God praise that he's ordering the steps of the righteous. Ah, come on. You got to choose to to view rejections in a new way. It's an, an angel locked up in that block of marble. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God may be, he may be protecting you from a harmful relationship. A broken engagement that some of you just can't get over. 
can be the hand of God halting one relationship so he can guide you to the one he has for you. Failure to be hired for that job may mean that God's directing you to a different assignment. A prayer, oh, I've struggled with this one. A prayer that I thought went unanswered was actually my God protecting me from harm. That's why the Bible says you better delight yourself in Jesus. Find joy in the Lord every day and submit your decisions to him and lift up one or both of your hands. I declare he's going to make sure that the wrong doors are closed and the right doors are open. And if I have a church that believes it, clap your hands and give God praise right now. Is that all you got today? Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God and give him praise. The right doors are being opened and the wrong doors are being closed. Boy, you can trust God for that every day. You believe it? Say yes. Sometimes rejection is actually protection. Okay, write this down. Going quick. Recognize that sometimes rejection, I've already touched on this, but rejection is someone else's, can be someone else's projection. Although you, listen, you may not become friends with those who reject you. That's not what I'm preaching. God wants you to make an attempt at peace. Listen, in this divided world we live in, you better hear my heart today. Romans 12 says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, you live at peace with everyone. With who? With who? With who? Some of you are going, does that mean a Republican? Does that mean a Democrat? Huh? la di da di and Everybody. Live at peace with everyone. And many times I get it, peace isn't possible, but at least you need to try. And if the attempt fails, you can still have peace of mind even if the difficult person does not accept you. And what makes this attitude possible is when you finally recognize that whenever someone's rejecting you, it actually says more about them than it does you. Because often people reject others because of their own insecurities. And understanding this is what allows you to see their rejection of you for what it really is. Not only does this keep your heart from hardening toward them, but it also creates what I talked about, that that Teflon coating on your soul. Whenever insults, whenever betrayals, whenever hurtful actions are sent your way, listen church, you can avoid picking up an offense because... You won't take it personal. And this is exactly the perspective that Jesus had on the cross when he said, forgive them, Father. Watch, for they don't even know what they're doing. He knew that their actions were more about them than they were about him. And before you say, but Pastor Ben, that was Jesus. I could never do that. You better remember that Stephen chose the exact same attitude when he was being stoned to death in Acts chapter 7. And this also gives you a heart for those people, church, because you recognize that they're simply operating out of their own hurt. So you'll be able, you know, much more able and inclined to what? To live peacefully. I wish the church would get this. There's so much noise to live peacefully toward other people. And sometimes just your attempt at making peace is going to shatter that filter of rejection. God wants you to trust him. Church, God wants you to obey him. Watch this. He wants you to trust him 
and obey him. Hear me. Even if your efforts fail at making peace. We still trust him. We still obey him. You may never be reconciled with someone who holds grudges. You may never be reconciled with someone who refuses to work out differences. Do you know what that's called? It's actually, I don't have time to teach on it, but it's called frustrated forgiveness. Making this attempt, though, can set you free from your rejection. And I'll tell you, it might even soften the heart of those who dislike you. And yeah, there's someone who doesn't like you. But there's somebody you don't like. And making peace means what? Extending forgiveness to the person who hurt you. Colossians 3, to the church, you, you, you must make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, remember. What does it say? Say remember. remember. Now don't you forget what you just said. The 930 service struggled with this. What's the word? Say remember. remember. Say the word what? Remember. Say the word what? Remember. remember what? Say it with me. Remember the Lord forgave you. Stop. Does it say the Lord is slowly, progressively forgiving you? Does it say he's doling out a little forgiveness every once in a while? No, what does it say? He what? Forgave. Forgave. Done. Past tense. You are forgiven freely, fully, finally. Watch. Remember what? The Lord forgave you. Read the rest. So. Oh, you love the first part, y'all. You shout on the first part. Remember, the Lord forgave you. Yeah. And then I said, read the rest. And you said, so you can forgive those who hurt you. I'm not going to lie. It's tough being rejected. I understand all too well. I understand, but the Bible says we need to forgive because we've been forgiven. The reason a whole lot of us have a hard time forgiving is we have no clue how forgiven we already are. What was the word I told you to say? What was the word? What was the word? The key to being able to forgive those who reject you is to. Remember what? Do you see it? When we remember what Jesus already did for us, then we have the power, the power, the wonder working power to forgive somebody else. And if we hold on to the hurt, it'll only end up hurting us. And when we don't forgive others, it creates that bitterness and that anger inside of us. And that's what's happened to a whole lot of you. The fact is, it is eating you up on the inside and it is draining you of energy and it is leaving you tired all the time. I've never seen so many exhausted, worn out, tired people and it's causing your perspective to be twisted and you're making out of control decisions because of the way you see things and it's affecting your relationships and it's affecting your health, your physical body. And every time we start to feel that stuff coming on, remember Jesus on the cross. He gave his life. That's why we gather as a local church. That's why we sing these songs. That's why we sit under the teaching of God's word. Because we've got to be reminded that he loves us. He wasn't thinking of himself. He was thinking of us. And if I got anybody here thankful for Jesus, don't make me beg. Give him praise like you're losing your natural mind. Is there anybody here thankful for Jesus? If you are, open up your mouth and shout right now. Is that all you got today? Open up your mouth and give him praise. I'm about to do seven laps around this building right now. Do I got anybody here thankful that you are forgiven freely? fully, finally, and you got power. 
wonder working power to walk in forgiveness of others. Shout right now if you're glad of There's an anointing. Don't stop giving praise. Healing is sweeping into this room right now. First Peter 2, 23. They called him every name in the book. And he said nothing back. Why we always got to say something back? You say, no, not me. Really? I've seen your social media. You nasty. Why you feel like you always got to say something about everything? Everything. They called him every name and he said nothing. He suffered in silence. Content to, what are the two next words? Content to, stop. Content to, stop. Content to, let God what? Content to what? Content to what? Content to what? Let God what? I don't know who that's for today. The definition of forgiveness is found in two words. You just said it. What is it? You let God that set things right. Forgiveness isn't about trusting the person again. Did you hear what I said? Forgive, there's a lot of wacky teaching on forgiveness. Forgiveness, I didn't say, is always about trusting the person again or forgetting everything that ever happened. It's about putting the situation, take your hands like you're holding it, putting the situation in God's hand and what? Letting God instead of you what? Seeking revenge and holding grudges. I have no doubt right now. Someone who has rejected you is coming to your mind. And I'm not even going to wait. There's an anointing. I'm not going to wait. We're going to take a moment right now to pray. And I want you to take your hands just as an act of, of, of trust. Just a picture. You take that thing. Some of you say, you don't understand what I've been through. I couldn't hold it in this little hand. You'd take a dump truck. You think you're the only one that experienced rejection? My goodness. I'd have to, I'd have to bring a U-Haul to dump all my issues. Right there where you are. You pray something like this. God, Father, I'm giving you this hurt. See, a lot of times we don't even talk to him about it. We just, we just hold on to it on the inside. But say, Father, I, I give you this hurt of rejection right now. It hurt. But right now I'm letting go. I'm letting, let go. I'm letting go. I'm letting go. You're in charge. Because I'm forgiven. I'm able to forgive the person who rejected me. Some of you, it was years and years and years ago, and you still feel the sting of it like it was yesterday. But right there where you are, Father, I'm giving you, just right there, I'm giving you. See, I'm trying to teach you because you're probably, you're probably going to have to understand that is not the last time you're going to pray that prayer. If it's, if it's a deep hurt from rejection, you might have to pray that thing 70 times a day 
as you struggle, as you wrestle with it. But here's what happens. You keep doing it. That's the fight of faith. And then maybe next week, you only have to pray that prayer maybe 30 times a day. And then maybe only 10 times the week after that. And, and eventually, there will come a time when you realize, wow, I haven't thought about that. That hurt for, for several months. That's how you let go and you let God. That's how you are healed from the deep pain of rejection. And in the name of Jesus, I speak healing. I thank you, Mr. Healer. Your presence is in this place. Lift your hands and begin to thank him right now. All over this room, there's an anointing. Just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I receive your healing now. Healer, I receive your healing now. I receive your healing now. You feel like you've been kicked in the gut and he's right there. You feel like you can't catch your breath. The rejection was so hard on my soul. Not alone. Not alone. Thank you, healer. Thank you, healer. Thank you, healer. Thank you for healing. If you're thankful for Jesus, the healer, give him praise right now. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One, one, one more point. Can I preach the gospel? Wrote, you, you actually wrote a song based on this one thought that we had in a gospel circle. Write this down. I want to close with good news and I want to talk to the church. Church, if you're going to heal from rejection, you're going to have to find peace in God's acceptance, not the acceptance of others. Look at our theme verse again, real quick. Ephesians 1, 6, I'm almost done. To the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the beloved. And you better hear me today. There's a whole lot of stuff being preached, but sadly the good news, the gospel of God's acceptance is not widely preached. Thank God for a church like this. You are much more likely to hear about God's high standards than His unmerited favor. And it's like Jesus has this list of, of positive qualities that He's looking for in His ideal bride. Hello, bride of Christ. She needs to be a good cook like Martha. And she needs to have plenty of, uh, you know, good works like the woman in Proverbs 31. And she should have a sense of humor and enjoy long walks on the beach. She should, she should, she should, she should. It's ridiculous. Jesus has no list. And if he did, none of us would ever make it. Yet many act as if Jesus is grading them on their performance. That's why I wrote a book called Enough. It came out this year. Breaking free, living free from performance. Listen, you need to read it. But a whole lot of you are mistaking the voice of condemnation for the voice of the Lord. How much did you do this weekend? Have you done enough? And you lost your patience again. You're not a good enough father. You're a horrible mother. You didn't keep your commitment. That's disappointing. You disappoint me. You disappoint me. You disappoint me. And this perverse picture of performance-based living and acceptance has given rise to a strange situation. While many Christians know that Jesus is the friend of sinners, they don't know that he's the friend of them. And they don't see themselves as God's sons and God's daughters, but as servants. Listen to me. God is in your divine employer. He is called your heavenly father who loves you and accepts you. 
And it's imperative that you find peace every day in a world of rejection. You were rejected by family. You were rejected by a job. You were rejected by a spouse. You were rejected by children. You've been rejected in this world. But you've got to find peace in this reality that your Father loves you and accepts you. In fact, you have to begin to see yourself as totally accepted by God and basking in His divine and unmitigated pleasure. And this is where the rubber of your faith hits the road of His grace. And hear me, church, if you don't receive His acceptance every day, you are going to waste your entire life. Watch this running after something he's already given you and that's why so many of you are so tired and worn out and burned out watch this because you're running after something you already have and as long as you're craving this is why so many of us struggle we crave the acceptance I'm, and, and I'm not just talking to you I'm talking to my friends in ministry and my network of pastors because we fall into the same trap you know we get up and preach hoping that they will accept us and that they will finally receive us and that they'll finally love us and, and we get trapped into all kinds of things and, 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 and we long we crave for acceptance from people and if that's your life you'll continue to experience the disappointments of rejection however if you find your approval in Christ and Christ alone you can find peace in his acceptance of you can I talk to the church for just a moment in a very divided world and I can see the next few months just winding up tighter and tighter church don't you ever forget let me pastor you for just a moment Romans 15, 7, accept one another just as Christ accepted you. As a pastor, let me tell you that we work hard to create a culture of acceptance. The church is not simply a hotel for saints, but it is a hospital for sinners. And Calvary is a church where people are growing more and more. I haven't arrived, but thank you for being a church that's letting me grow more and more and more in the awareness of God's acceptance. And maybe, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but maybe this is your first time to Calvary Church. We want you to know that you are as welcome as a founding member to this church. We have every kind of person you can imagine in this church and at every location. We have every kind of person. We've got red and yellow, black and white. All are accepted in God's sight. We've got Catholics. We've got Charismatics. We've got Baptists. We've got Presbyterians. We've got Episcopals. We've got Lutherans. We've got Pentecostals who love to shout. We've got agnostics. We've got atheists. We've got sinners and believe it or not we got Republicans we got Democrats we got independents and it really doesn't matter what you wear or your economic status and it doesn't matter whether you've been married or never married or married ten times and it doesn't matter if you speak in tongues or you got a tongue piercing it doesn't matter if you're a tourist a seeker or a doubter or have a bleeding heart or a broken spirit or can't get out of bed if I got a church thankful I am accepted Clap your hands and get clap your hands and say I am accepted in the beloved say it again I am accepted in the beloved shout it out say I'm accepted high five two people and tell them you are accepted go even if you gotta cross the aisle, tell them you are accepted. No, even if you gotta cross the aisle, walk, 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 walk. Tell two people. Tell them, tell them, tell them. They need to hear it. We live in a world full of rejection. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Tell two more, find five more, tell them. Tell them, prophesy over them, prophesy over them. 
across the aisle. Come on, Upper Tier, what are you doing? Talk to them. Five more, five more, five more. Jump up, five more, five more. Tell them, prophesy. You are accepted in the beloved. Standing together, my prayer for you today is simply this that you'll accept the truth that God accepts you. He's healing you now. Think about that verse. Think about, think about that verse you're going, you're going to stand in all week. What was it? To the praise of the glory of your performance. Nope. His acceptance of you is to the praise and the glory of His grace. Isn't that wonderful? And then it gets better. To the praise and the glory of grace. Look at the middle part. He made us accept it. His acceptance isn't something you ever need strive for, struggle for, strain for. You already have it. What relief. Take a deep breath. What relief. What freedom. What joy. But then look at the last part. In the beloved. I always point you to Jesus. This is referring to Jesus. God's acceptance comes to you on account of his son. So if you want to know just how acceptable you are to God, you only need to look to the one called the beloved. God's healing broken hearts today. Lift up your hands all over this place. I am loved by you. I am loved by you. I am loved by you. I'm accepted. Say it. Say it. Say it. Lift your hands, church. Say it. I can't hear you. Declare it. Every hand lifted. Say it. The world's got to hear it. This is good news. Say it. Reject you say I am loved by you, Lord. I am loved by you. Say it, there's a healing anointing. Come on, say it, say it, say it. I want to hear just the voices. Say it. I am Set your eyes on Jesus. Say it again. Pastors, elders, quickly get in place. Lift your hands, church. Father, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the only way to God. He died on the cross as us, for us. He rose again from the dead as us, for us, to give us abundant life. Out loud, church, say, I believe it. Because we've been forgiven, we forgive all those who've rejected us, hurt us, betrayed us failed to show us love we believe Lord that you accept us because of what you did for us on the cross we're accepted we're highly favored we're the object of your special care you really love us you really want us 
We're members of your family. We're sons and daughters. And I thank you, Lord. We accept ourselves the way you made us. We're your workmanship. And we thank you for what you've done. And I declare over these precious people, we believe that you've begun a good work in us and you will carry it on to completion. And now, Lord, we proclaim our release from any dark, evil spirit that's taken advantage of the past wounds in our life. Woo. I command now any spirit of rejection, rebellion, or generational bondage leave our life now in the name above every name we release now our spirit to rejoice in you Lord and I thank you for your joy your peace your kindness your acceptance your love that's at work right now now If I'm talking to anybody in this room who has felt the pain of rejection and today you believe is your day of healing, hold up your hand when I count to three. One, two, three. I'm not rushing this moment. Hold it up high so I can see you. Listen to me. I have pastors and elders right here. My wife and I are here and we are not leaving today until we pray a prayer of freedom and breakthrough over those of you that want it. If you don't, you walk out of this place in victory. But if today we can declare God's goodness and God's grace and God's favor and God's health and God's healing and God's wholeness over you, even now when I count to three, get out of your seat and come down here. We're going to pray for you. One, two, three. Come on, come on, come on. You're going to be healed today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, 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 I speak healing, come on, come on, come on, I speak healing, I speak healing. Stay in this attitude of worship. I love you, church. Have a great week. I'll see you right back here. If you need prayer, come forward right now.